Hi, I'm Kirby Glad, and this is a training video about preferential voting where you have uh, multiple people to be elected to a position. So in our last example, we had uh, one position to be filled. That was the precinct chair. We had four different candidates, and we saw how preferential voting can be used to uh, work through an election process uh, and, and uh, using one ballot to accomplish the same thing that you would normally have to do on multiple ballots. Uh, I'm Kirby Glad. I'm a professional registered parliamentarian and certified in the Roberts Rules of Order for preferential voting. Now in this case, we're going to see what happens if you have multiple people to be elected. So let's say you have a, uh, you're electing uh, four county delegates and you have uh, nine people that are running. Uh, this is a way that you can accomplish that very quickly uh, without having to, uh, again, do multiple rounds of balloting. Now, we're going to depart a little bit from Robert's Rules of Order here. Under Robert's Rules, you would simply reduce your number of uh, candidates until you got down to the number that you're electing. So if you, uh, I'm really assuming that you've watched the previous video. If you haven't, you should go back and look at it now because we're just going to continue where we left off from that video. So you remember we had four candidates and uh, we eliminated all three of them until we got down to a winner. So if we were following strictly Robert's rules, we would only eliminate the first two, then our remaining two candidates would be the winners if we had two positions to fill. So let's assume we're, we're electing two county delegates. However, our state party rules are that every candidate must have a majority. So that means we have to modify the process just a little bit. We have to, uh, uh, it, because if we follow the Roberts rules strictly and we just get down to two, that ignores the second choice of everybody that's been eliminated. So uh, I know it's, it's a little bit complicated. If you think about it, you'll see what I'm saying. But let's just assume we now are going to elect two candidates out of uh, our four possible ones. Let's go to the table now and see how that would work. All right, so we, uh, this is where we ended up at the end of the last video. We had just elected Tom as our um, precinct chair. So let's pretend now that this election wasn't for precinct chair, but instead was for county delegate. And we have just elected Tom as our first county delegate. So you would, uh, uh, sometimes it works out that the person um, who is in second place would um, become the other delegate, but it doesn't always work that way because, again, of people's second choices. So everyone who voted for Tom, they had a second preference on their ballot that they could um, uh, have someone else as, as their choice. So now that we've elected Tom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything back to the beginning. In other words, we're going to do the whole process again, only we're going to eliminate Tom. So I'm going to put Jeff and um, Sally back up here, and I'm going to put these votes back where I got them. And uh, because I've kind of used these, uh, um, uh, this, this method, it's actually pretty easy to put, put the, the, uh, the, the ballots back. You don't have to keep recounting uh, each stack as much. So um, now uh, you remember that we have elected Tom. Tom is no longer eligible for this race. I'm going to start a new sheet here. So I'm going to start off with my, my uh, possible candidates are Jeff, Jim, and Sally. Tom has already been elected. So uh, what we're going to do, since Tom's eliminated, we're going to take his votes, just like we did before eliminating the bottom, and we're going to eliminate the top. So uh, in this case, this uh, person who voted for Tom, they didn't have a second choice. Remember, that goes in the exhausted column. Um, uh, this person, uh, their second choice was Sally. So that will go to Sally. And then this person also um, voted for Sally as their second choice. So remember that um, we already had the numbers here for their, for their first vote. Jeff had two. Uh, Jim had four, and, and I would still have these votes double counted, and I would have the people counting uh, write the numbers there on the, on the sheet. Sally had two votes to begin with. Now, since we eliminated Tom, uh, we also picked up another two votes for uh, Sally. And then remember, we had um, these two that were uh, illegal ballots from our very first count. And we had this blank one this absentee, so we're going to put that on the sheet also. And now we also have this one that's exhausted. 
remember, because uh, there was no second choice after Tom. So that's going to be added to uh, the exhausted count here, um, making uh, two that are exhausted. Um, we have two now votes now for Jeff, four for Jim, uh, four for Sally, uh, two that are illegal. That gives us a total of 12, meaning uh, seven is the majority. That's um, half, more than half. And then uh, 12 plus two is 14. That's the number of ballots we started with, so our math is still good. Now we're going to eliminate Jeff. Okay, so we're gonna take Jeff's card, put it down here. Um, then I'm going to give, now in this case, Tom has uh, been eliminated already because he's already been elected. So this vote is now gonna be in the exhausted column. Okay, so I'll put that over here under exhausted. There's no more votes we can use. Okay, this vote for Jeff then goes to Tom. He's been eliminated. So the next one on the list is Sally. That's the next uh, one who hasn't been eliminated that we can give the vote to. So out of the two votes for Jeff, now one of them went to Sally. We'll put a mark there. One of them went to Exhausted. So we'll put a mark there. And um, now we just bring the votes across again. This uh, Jeff has been eliminated. Uh, Jim has a four, uh, Sally has five, and um, we have two that are exhausted. That means that um, uh, the total here, uh, the total votes cast is now 11, meaning that six are required for, um, for winning. And then we have three that are exhausted, and 11 and three is a total of 14, and that matches so we know our math is good. So um, now we look at six are required as, as the majority to win. He only has five. So we're going to take uh, Jim's votes and uh, divide those out. And you see after Jim is Sally, another vote for Sally after Jim. Um, Jim and Tom have been eliminated. So the next uh, available vote is for Sally. And then, the ne and then his vote after is, as, uh, is also for Sally. So we have four additional votes for Sally, and that brings across as nine. We still have the two that are exhausted, and um, that gives us still 11 votes, of which six are required. So now Sally has nine votes, and uh, only six are required, so Sally is, is, uh, is declared the winner. Now, if we look at our other vote before, remember we only had Jim and Tom as the last two. So this is why we just don't take the top two vote getters and say that they're elected, because uh, Tom would have been elected, but, but uh, Jim would have been elected when he wasn't the most popular choice. And the reason that Sally eventually won is because she was the second choice of a lot of people, and especially those who voted uh, for Jim. They wanted Sally to be their next choice. Uh, and, um, uh, I'm sorry, especially those who voted for Jeff. They wanted Sally to be their next choice instead of Jim. So this is why if you're voting for multiple openings, you have to um, get your first result, then you eliminate the person who won, and you start again as though uh, that person had been eliminated, and you continue that process. So now, if we were electing three people, then we would put all the cards back to where we started, all the ballots back to where we started. We would eliminate Tom, put his votes out, and then we would also eliminate Sally. And then we would see uh, between uh, Jeff and Jim who would uh, be the next person to be elected, again, by a majority. If you get to the end of this process and nobody has a majority, even the last person left doesn't have a majority, um, then what you have to do is uh, re-vote. So that hardly ever happens under preferential voting. It can happen if you have two people running and just one of them is just not popular and people just don't want him and they don't, uh, uh, you don't vote for him, um, then, uh, then it's possible. But that hardly, hardly ever happens. Uh, but that, in that case, you would just ask for more nominees so you could get someone that uh, the people wanted to vote for. So in conclusion, um, now we have uh, the way of, of uh, determining the, the preferential balloting. If you have uh, multiple people that you're trying to elect for the same race, uh, 
And uh, these tally sheets, again, are available on the same website that uh, you got the link for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, email me. I'm happy to answer questions as a professional registered parliamentarian at Kirby at kirbyglad.com. That's K-I-R-B-Y at K-I-R-B-Y-G-L-A-D dot com or see my website. Thank you.